What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over something a little bit different. We're going to be going over how to edit engine code in Unreal Engine. And so this could be useful for a lot of reasons. So uh, we have these, you know, Unreal gives a lot of freedom to its users. However, we have these things such as our capsule collider on our character that can be a bit of a pain when you're trying to edit them because they are, you know, so much of Unreal's logic relies on that specific component. And so changing Unreal Engine uh, engine code can be used to fix up some of the, the more specific issues that we run into or edit things on the back end that are going to make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, a lot of people do this. It's very common, but it is a uh, more difficult and a little bit of a rarer technique. So we'll have to go over. I'm, I'm going to edit a few things in engine code throughout the different series that I have personally done in the past and and may need to do for some of our online capabilities as well that I've done research into. However, you could use this for pretty much anything uh, that you could think of. You can, I mean, you have full access to the engine after this. So, you know, you might be thinking, when I go into my project, I can see engine code just fine. And we can do that as an example. So let's say I go into my fighting game. And I'll resize this window when it loads so you can see it properly. Let's say I open up Visual Studio for my fighting game. Okay, so you have the engine code section here, right? If I close everything else, you have your games and your engine code section. So if you go in here, you can check out anything that you want. Like for example, I can even open up this scene component.cpp is it something in the Unreal Engine code. It's not something I wrote. And so all of it's here. You can use this to look at any engine code you want. However, without doing the things I'm going to show you today, that's all it is. The engine code in Unreal is basically a snapshot of that version of the engine and its code. It, you can't change it. If you make a change to it, it won't compile. You can test this by making a change, adding a breakpoint, and then watching as it tells you that uh, either the code is not up to date or there's no symbols found, something along those lines, depending on how you do it and what you have installed. Regardless, so this won't work, you know, if you have to actually change this. You can debug it if you don't make changes, and you can look at it, but you can't change it. That's the important part. That's the point I'm trying to drive home. So, um, well, I'm trying to close that in case we want it later, but it's fine. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do two things. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to install symbols because you will need that to debug engine code. But first, let's get it to where you can edit engine code on a project. So I'm going to close this Visual Studio because I'm actually going to open up a new instance when we go to do it. But you're going to want to go to this website, um, this web address. I'll put it in the description below, but you can see it right here. It's github.com slash epic games. It will bring you to this page that you see here. And at this point, you can you know look through their repository this is their git repository so everything that epic games uploads is on here well epic games they offer uh, the unreal engine engine code and you just download it and put it into your repository so we're not doing anything sketchy here we're getting it directly from the source from the makers of unreal to access it though we do need to be a part of this team and to do that we need to sign up for epic games so if you go to sign up, I'll go through. They do have their own checklist here and tell you how to do it. But I'm going to follow this and show you exactly how to do it, just so that no one gets confused along the way and also because a video guide is often easier for this sort of thing. So if you go to sign up, you can go and uh, register your GitHub ID using these instructions. Okay, so you can grab this link right here. And then you can find these repositories here, Unreal Engine and Unreal Tournament, uh, GitHub, repositories for the engine code now once if you open that other link it pops up like this and it tells you exactly what you need to do but again i'll show you you need to have a github account currently i'm not signed in i signed out to show you this but of course i have a github account and i'm going to go ahead and sign into it if not if you don't have one just go ahead and sign up for one it's completely free won't cause you any issues i'm going to sign in now all right so I've signed in and I've actually made a different account because I've already done this on my own and things will be different if it's a new account or your, you know, my main account that's already done this. So if I go back to this page now, the little guide on how to do it, 
Now I, I'm signed in. I have to make sure that I verified this Git with my Unreal Engine account as well. So if you go in sign into unrealengine.com, as it says here, you can just click this link or just go to the link. It's very simple. And sign in. Also shown the bro on here, but if you're signed out, just click sign in and sign in. Very, very simple there. Okay. Now you have to link the two. You need to link your Epic Games account to your GitHub account. You can go to your personal. Now, once you get connected, you'll have to go through this process as it says here. So basically, you sign in. It asks if you want to link the account. Once you do that, you have to authorize it. Again, all automated. These will keep popping up one after the other. Once you uh, successfully authorize it right here, it will send you a link to that email that your GitHub and or Epic Games is attached to. Then, if you go to that email and click Join Epic Games... You'll be in the repository in the team. You will get confirmation, but at that point, you're good to go. That's all, all that stuff is what we had to do. That way, we can actually see the Unreal Engine depot here. So, back here again, and now we have this. Uh, this link should now work instead of giving us a 404 error since we are part of the Unreal Engine team with all those connections that we made. And now you have access to the engine code. So at this point, it's actually pretty simple to get it. It's putting it into our project that'll take the most work. Since we already have projects that are started, then there are quite a bit of things we'll have to do. So they have this little readme that's just on the page itself, which I also recommend following because there is a lot. And it's, you know, they're the experts at this considering they're the ones that have it. So what they've done is they've installed GitHub for Windows, which I have GitHub Desktop. All right, so when I open up GitHub Desktop, I'm already signed in, but yet another sign-in option you will need to do. You can go to File, Options, and Sign In. If you're not already signed in, it will ask you to sign in. But basically, make sure that you are signed in with your account that is linked and that you did all the authorization for. Once you do that, you can actually just flat out grab this repository. It's very easy. So the way I've done it is I've gone to the Current Repository tab, Add, Clone Repository, and then you can go back to your web page. And you can take the clone that we talked about here. Just copy this link. Put it in here. Uh, excuse me. Go to URL. Put it in here. I've already got it, so that's why it's complaining. But this is where the path relates to. So that's where you're grabbing from Unreal Engine. This is your local path. This is where it's going to go on your computer. So make sure you change that to somewhere that you want to work on this just like that and this is the path that I made when I go to clone to it it's going to clone Unreal Engine this is going to take a heck of a lot of time um, the actual clone itself might not take too long but we do need to grab the actual branch as well that we're going to be working on so expect to take quite a bit here between pulling you know cloning and forking the repo grabbing the right data and we'll catch up once this is complete Okay, now once you're done, it is going to pop up like this. Um, you're going to have to actually choose the branch that you want because by default, it's going to put you on release. So you'll have access to all these branches. These are the versions. Now, if you want to actually submit engine code changes to Epic Games, you know, if you're fixing bugs or you're doing this for work, then you'll have to fork the repo, which means you can basically get access to it, create your own branch, push things to it, and then uh, people at Epic can actually look at your, your changes and determine if they want to merge them or use them in some way. Uh, that's not my intention for today. I'm actually just using it so I can modify things locally, uh, minor things that I need locally, so that I can create the game that I want. And so, um, or experiment, you know, maybe I just want to experiment. So what I've done is I've gone to the version that my fighting game template is already. So that way the engine code is as close as possible. It will be a little bit different because depending on my version of 4.24, since there is like a 0.2 after it, um, you know, it could still be different than what's on here. But as long as it's close enough, it should function fine. So you can click on this. You know, you, you may have to fetch. This fetch is going to take a long time. Sometimes when you clone, it fetches automatically. So you may already have these. If not, if you don't have any branches, you can't select anything. Hit fetch up here in the top right of GitHub desktop. 
this will take a long time because this is going to pull all the changes, all the files that are in all these branches and see what's new. You can see I've already done this not even long ago, and it's taking a very long time to complete this operation. So expect to wait uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Then once you do have these, select your version. And you can fetch again on this if you need to. However, you shouldn't have to. But what I do is uh, go to pull, repository pull, when you're on the branch that you want. If it's grayed out, you don't have to do that. And if you're not getting anything, then you already have everything on that branch, so you're good to go. But just a little safety check to know that you have everything related to that branch. Once you've done that, you actually have the engine code here. Then I will have everything. For me, it's actually an Unreal Engine because I've already downloaded it. But for me, you can see I have everything in here. You are not going to have as much as I am. You're not going to have the fighting game template. And you're not going to have a lot of these other files. That's because we're not done yet. But you should have stuff in your file path that you chose to clone Unreal to. And once you're done and once you have 4.24, we're going to go to the next step on the readme here. So they tell you to open up the folder in Explorer and run setup.bat. And this is true. This is the next thing we're going to do. Right in here, in the same folder, there's a setup.bat. It's a batch file, which if you don't know, basically will just perform an operation. You run it by double clicking it and it will, you know, run command line operations and things like that. You can also right click and uh, run as administrator if you want, but you really shouldn't have to do that. Just double click it. It will run. If I do it, I don't think anything will actually happen so it knows that I have my dependencies there but it'll pop up with a little window like this and it should tell you that everything is good if you do get errors you'll need to look into solving them however I've never seen errors doing this so just read what the command line says and paste it into Google if you need help or ask me I'll be happy to help if I can but I'm probably just gonna close it because I really don't have a need to do it all right and at this point you'll have more files that generated the setup bat generates other files once you do that you're almost done you have to generate the project files as well and it tells you this run generate project files and so uh, generate project files will be here just like setup was so you double click this guy it'll do it this one i think i can do this one's very quick and um, it will probably regenerate the files for me anyway a lot of these files that get generated are binary files, intermediate files, files that we don't normally touch. It's just to set up our project. There you go. So it actually started working, and now it's just making sure that the data is correct and writing to the folder, which it did successfully. At this point, you will have some more things in here. For example, you should have the solution file now. And with the solution file, you have a lot more power you can actually start doing things. So as it says, you, you're going to load into that solution file, and then you're going to set up your settings. These settings I talk about all the time in my tutorials, so I'll do it again. But really, we're just going to set them back up to how we initially made them. So if you open up the UE4 solution here, And now I've successfully opened it up. Uh, you can leave most of this alone, but the main things you need to do are change this uh, solution, this configuration manager tab here, from debug or whatever it's on to debug editor, debug game development editor, depending on what you normally have. If you don't know, you can check your other project and just see what it's on and match that. You also want 164 because that's what Unreal builds in. And then you're good here. We're going to build it. But as it says, you can start your project um, by running it. So at this point, you've finished all of the instructions on here. You can come back out, go to the code. So you can just right click on Visual Studio here and click build. I did switch it to automation tool because that is what I usually use to build. I'm not sure if the other one would have worked or not. I've never tried it, but I'd recommend just having these settings here. And then, like I said, once you right-click and build, it will take quite a bit of time to actually complete this operation the first time you do it. Um, it's got to build everything. It honestly takes probably close to 40 minutes the first time you do it. 
and it's going to sit here and it's going to build for quite some time so i will obviously cut ahead although you should not have any issues building if you do you may have gone wrong somewhere else or you might not have permissions to build or generate files in that folder that you're in again feel free to ask me post in the comments or something like that if you need assistance also feel free to look up the errors online now eventually it will complete and at this point you have a an unreal engine version that you can actually use and work with and this is the entire engine with all the engine code so you can modify it to your liking now you do have to either put in your project files which you technically can do you can move your project into the engine and it will if you generate project files it will know to use the engine that it's in however that's um, <laughs> not the preferred method easily what you can do is just go into your project I'm gonna go to I made a copy just because I was testing out the changes between the two and wanted to make sure I had everything working correctly but if you go into your project and again perhaps make a copy if you're unsure like I was right click switch Unreal Engine version and you can your computer will pick up on all the versions of Unreal that you have installed then once it completes you can simply click on it and try and launch it or you may want to right click and generate Visual Studio project files again that's what I did because uh, the project files are specific to the engine version and things like that so it'll probably make you do a long rebuild if you don't do this anyway so I'd recommend right click generate Visual Studio project files and you should get a new solution. Open up the solution. At this point, I've uh, given some examples of what I can do with engine code. We'll cover different things that I may be using it for in the future. This was just an, a test. I actually am not using this in this method. So ignore the actual logic you see in here. But I do recommend having some sort of like... Um, you know header or prefix for engine code changes because I do want to be able to search for these and find these to know oh I changed this at this point and that's why you know maybe this acts this way all right and so I'm gonna close this one more time that's how you can actually use this this version you can now make changes to the engine code and they will be reflected and I'll actually show you this let's open this with Visual Studio 2019 and you can ignore uh, anything you see on here this is just my copied project so it's not representative at all of anything in the fighting game to date but once you're in here you now will be able to go into an engine code file so let's go to one let's go to doesn't really matter what we choose but since I don't really know where anything is let's go to like scene component 2d or the, just a scene component is fine I'm going to search and I'm going to grab my file. Let's say scene component.cpp. And so now what I can do is I can completely change something and the engine code will respect it and understand it. So I can literally just like take this away. Should be attached. Save that. Then once this completes, you will be able to uh, put a breakpoint in and do that same test again. You know, run, run the logic. When it gets hit, you'll see that you can actually hit the breakpoint despite changing the code. The code did not go out of date. Now, if you cannot hit the breakpoint and it tells you that no symbols have been loaded for this document, that's another easy fix and something that you may want to add. It's a good thing to have in general, even if you're not going for the editing engine code, but rather just using something that has engine code and you know debugging the engine code. You can go to the Epic Games Launcher. You can go to the library under the Unreal Engine tab or section. 
and you can go to the version that you want to be able to debug. So mine is 4.24.3. And then I can go to the options. And here are your installation options. You're going to want to enable editor symbols for debugging. The engine source should already be included. Doesn't really need to be in here as we found out because as it says here, cannot be modified and rebuilt but it's probably already clicked. But the one you really want is editor symbols for debugging. Include symbols to allow debugging C++ projects in the editor. You're gonna want that anyway, but you can have that and that will work for the engine code as well. So make sure that's included if it's not already. And then the final result is I can go into my scene component.cp or any of my engine code files. And let's say I go into somewhere that I know will be hit when I load this game. And assuming this works as intended, we will hit this breakpoint. It doesn't really matter when, because I don't care. It's just the fact that you will not be able to hit it, period, if you don't have the editor symbols, if your uh, breakpoint is out of date, so your engine code is out of date with what's expected, which will happen if you try to edit the engine code that exists in the project without doing all the things I showed you before. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. You can now edit your engine code successfully and debug it um, more efficiently. That way you'll be able to actually edit things that Unreal has already set up or Epic has already set up and you'll be able to use them to your own advantage. So we're going to be using some of these tactics in the future, although I'll keep it very, very limited. I don't particularly enjoy editing engine code. Um, I usually think that there's a better way to do it. However, in some cases, it will come to this level, and this is just a little bit of extra knowledge that may help you if you run into a particularly tricky issue. So, once again, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for me and the channel than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. Uh, if you had any issues with this, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. The link to the Discord community is in the description. You can click it and join for free. Also, feel free to just leave a comment, and I'll gladly respond when I can. But, yep, that's all I got. So, thanks again. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.